thousands of years ago, the Greeks tried to warn us of narcissism through the myth of Narcissus, a young man who fell in love with his own reflection when he looked into a pond. In fact, he became so infatuated with it that he stared at it for days until eventually he died of starvation. Narcissists have existed perhaps since the dawn of humankind. But it seems that over the last few years or decades, the number of narcissists has increased dramatically. So why is that? Well, the primary reason is that our culture rewards highly narcissistic behavior. Ever since we were children, society conditioned us to be narcissistic. For example, our parents and teachers urged us to pretend that we are something that we are not in order to be accepted, to pretend that we are good kids, good students, to seek external validation through getting good grades or through impressing authority figures. It also taught us to want to compete against our peers, to get better grades than our classmates, to outshine them, to outdo them, to show our teachers that we are better than them. It taught us that competition is what will lead to success. So we stopped being very much empathetic to our peers. We were made to believe that success is doing better than others, to get a better job, to earn more money, to acquire more possessions. This is how we measure our success, by how much more we have than others. And it's not just our parents or the education system that did that. It is also, for example, the advertising industry, which has been bombarding us with messages that we are inadequate, unimportant as we are, and that we need to acquire possessions to feel important, that we need to buy stuff or buy services to be accepted by society, to be seen as important. And then, of course, there is social media that has conditioned us to seek external validation through likes and shares and comments. And the people who are better at attracting eyeballs are those who are considered to be the most successful, the most important, the most influential. Hence, we call them influencers. And we constantly compare ourselves to them. We see their extraordinary looks or their extraordinary lives. And we feel that we are wasting our lives, that we are nothing compared to them. And we see how much they are being validated by society. And so we try to imitate them, to become like them by posting similar content. And then we are constantly scrolling on our electronic devices to see who likes our posts and who follows us. But no matter how much fame we get from social media, we still feel inadequate. We still feel unimportant. We still feel this sense of lack within us. Because what we truly need is self-love and self-acceptance. And no matter how much external validation we get, that's not enough. That's temporary and superficial. It can vanish as quickly as it appeared. Now, most of the behavior on social media is, I would say, benign. But there are also malignant narcissists. 
And those are usually found in high positions of the economic and political ladders. They are the owners and the CEOs of big corporations, people who don't care about the well-being of society, about the well-being of the planet, even about the well-being of their own employees and customers. They only care about their profit, about their fame, about their influence, about their power. And those people are causing so much damage in the world. But you see, our economic system rewards the behavior of those people. So more and more people are incentivized to develop narcissistic traits because in this economic system, the more narcissistic, ruthless, sociopathic you are, the more likely you are to climb the economic ladder. And then, of course, you have politicians, people who are power hungry, who want to control the lives of millions of other people. Now, not all politicians are like that, but I would say many, if not most of them, are. Politics attracts narcissistic people. And narcissistic people are those who usually do better at politics because they are better at manipulating people. They are more charismatic. They promise one thing to the world and they do something totally different that is against the wishes of the world, but is in favor of their own desires, their own desire for power, their own desire to serve their vested interests their own desire to acquire even more power and stay in power for as long as they can. So what can we do about the rise of narcissism that we see today? How can we deal with it? I could say a lot of things on the topic. For example, if we want to see less narcissists in the world, parents need to accept their children as they are. They need to offer them unconditional love. They need to stop urging them to pretend that there is something that they are not in order to be accepted. School needs to change from an environment of competition to a collaborative environment where kids are allowed to cultivate and share their gifts with their peers, instead of trying to outshine them. But for that to happen, our whole socioeconomic system needs to change. Our economy needs to change from a system that is profit-driven, consumeristic, competitive, to a system that is collaborative, a system where people share and work together for the common good. Such a system would not leave space for narcissists. It would incentivize altruism, not narcissism. We need to develop a true democratic system. The democracy that we have right now is a fake democracy. It does not represent the people. In a true democratic system, people would be able to take direct decisions about things that matter to them and involve their lives. And in such a system, narcissistic behavior would not be incentivized or rewarded. People who are narcissists would not be given any position of power. Now, of course, all of those are big changes, but there are things that each one of us can do right now. For example, we could stop engaging in narcissistic behavior. It is very easy to blame others, to say, those are the narcissists. We are not. But the truth is that being part of this culture, we have all been conditioned to have some narcissistic traits. So when, for example, we post something on social media, we have to think twice what we are posting. What are our intentions? Are we posting in order to share our ideas, to connect with others? to contribute to the betterment of the world? 
Or are we posting to promote ourselves? To inflate our egos? What is the motivation behind our actions? And then we need to stop giving attention to narcissists. We need to stop worshipping them. Because by doing so, we are feeding their narcissism. And we are indirectly saying to other people that their behavior is okay. It is acceptable. So we need to pull our attention away from them. In other words, we need to starve the beast by not participating in it as much as we can. Otherwise, the beast is going to grow bigger and bigger until it eventually devours us all.